Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about clinical efficacy of ketamine in psychiatric illness. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about ketamine in treatment resistant depression, ketamine treating deliberate cell form, suicidal ideas and attempt, ketamine in bipolar depression, what is the effectiveness of IV versus intranasal ketamine, ketamine assisted psychotherapy. These are the issues will be discussed in this video my dear friends. Ketamine hydrochloride has been approved for general anesthesia since many decades. It has been approved either as a standalone agent or in combination with other medication. It is an effective drug to use in a short term medical or surgical procedure which does not require muscle relaxation. Ketamine, a primarily a NMDA receptor antagonist. Ketamine has been researched very well. In the past two decades, the implication of ketamine usage in psychiatry has been explored. Ketamine has been found to be very effective in treatment resistant depression. It may be major depression, recurrent depressive disorder or bipolar depression. Ketamine also been found to be very effective in suicidal ideas and suicidal attempts. Ketamine also has been found to be effective in the preliminary studies with regard to PTSD, OCD, eating disorder, anxiety disorder and other substance use disorders. But however, that requires data my dear friends. Now let's discuss about ketamine in treatment resistant depression. As in and colleagues published a study in 2022. This study was published in Journal of Psychiatric Research. The title of the study was Real World Effectiveness of Ketamine in Treatment Resistant Depression. This was a systematic review and meta-analysis. The study looked into the effectiveness of ketamine in real world. On searching, they retrieved approximately 1152 records. After looking into the inclusion and exclusion criteria, they were able to get only 217 relevant documents or articles. And finally, they chose 79 studies. These 79 studies comprised of 2665 subjects. This meta-analysis confirmed that the ketamine is effective in treatment resistant depression. Further, the results of this meta-analysis validated that finding the effectiveness of ketamine does not decline with repeated usage of ketamine. That means there is no tachyphylaxis. This is an important finding my dear friends because invariably we consider ketamine can cause dependence and the tolerance is there and the same effect cannot be seen at the same dosage. That is our thinking. However, at this point of time, the available evidence clearly says that that effectiveness does not decline with repeated dosing. What about ketamine in bipolar depression? The most of the studies were done in major depression or in recurrent depression. Let's look into ketamine in bipolar depression. There was a study published by Boney and his colleagues in 2021 the journal called as Journal of Clinical Psychopharmacology. The title of the study was A Systematic Review on the Efficacy of Intravenous R-Ketamine for Bipolar Depression. This systematic review included five studies evaluating the efficacy of intravenous ketamine augmenting the treatment resistant depression patient with bipolar disorder. After search, they found only five studies which were three were RCTs and two were open label trial. These five studies comprised only 110 patients with bipolar depression. This review clearly indicated that 
ketamine iv infusion improved the depressive symptoms in bipolar disorder further suicidal ideation and anhedonia also decreased in bipolar depression however dissociation and transient increase in hypertension or blood pressure was noted in few of the cases ketamine infusion did not switch into mania hence my dear friend the available few studies report that ketamine can be given in bipolar depression also what about comparing ect versus ketamine which is more effective there was a study published in 2020 in jama psychiatry this was done by re and his colleagues the title of the study was efficacy and safety of ketamine versus ect among patients with major depressive episode this was a systematic review and meta analysis the main aim of this meta analysis was to look into is ketamine as effective as electroconvulsive therapy in patient with major depressive disorder which one is effective this systematic review and meta analysis included six trial which comprised of 340 patient this results of the study clearly indicated ect may be superior to ketamine in improving depressive symptoms my dear friends that means on comparing ketamine versus ect ect shows edge over ketamine in efficacy finding also suggested that ketamine and ect had a unique adverse effect profile not only that not only the side effect profile but the medical comorbidity dictated the either choice of ect or ketamine although ect found to be very effective than ketamine but however ect may use may decline over a period of time for for the following reasons stigma attached to ect is very high shock treatment electroconvulsive therapy treatment such kind of words and the media highlighting the ect as a negative treatment may dampen the use of ect side effects of ect and general anesthesia further comorbid medical conditions and need for training in ect using ect device legal regulations on usage of ect availability of anesthetist availability of muscle muscle relaxant and anesthetic agents need for ip care long list of investigations to be done before giving ect since when ect is given psychiatrist nurse and also anesthetist is required hence the cost of ect will be more than ketamine ketamine can be given in any opd either in phc where ot is not required at all the monitoring required in infusion of ketamine is very less than compared to ect hence my dear friends although ect may have a edge over ketamine over a period of time ketamine will overtake ect my dear friends the next question is does the route of administration of ketamine affects the antidepressant efficacy this is a very important question there was a study done by mering and his colleagues which was published in journal of psychiatric research in 2022 the title of the study was does the route of administration affect the antidepressant efficacy of ketamine a meta analysis of double blind rct comparing intravenous versus intranasal administration of ketamine the researcher of this study did a thorough research searching of various article total 11 studies comprising of 1340 patients were included in the meta analysis this study looked into the 24 hour response after the administration of single dosage of iv ketamine or intranasal ketamine the results of the study clearly indicated that there is no difference between intravenous or intranasal administration of ketamine my dear friends although there is no statistical difference however intravenous administration of ketamine showed 42% improvement when compared to 25% 
with regard to intranasal ketamine after 24 hours my dear friend that means IV ketamine appears to be superior than intranasal ketamine my dear friends however IV ketamine appears to be having slightly edge over intranasal but however you need to monitor the IV infusion you may have to admit the patient do baseline investigations and monitoring has to be very close whereas intranasal administration requires OPD basis only and the monitoring is hardly two hours my dear friend hence intranasal appears to be practical and pragmatic where IV ketamine although it is effective but cost effectiveness has to be seen now there is another important question whether R ketamine versus S ketamine which is more effective Anis and his colleagues published a study in 2021 in the Journal of Affective Disorder the title of the study was comparative efficacy of R ketamine versus S ketamine in treatment of depression a systematic review and a meta-analysis Anis and his colleagues did a thorough search and after inclusion and exclusion criteria they were able to find 24 RCTs comprising of 1877 participants were included in this meta-analysis the results of the meta-analysis clearly indicated R ketamine demonstrated greater overall response greater remission rate and also lower dropout in treatment of depression evidence suggests that R ketamine may score over S ketamine but however because of the abuse potential compared to S ketamine R ketamine is considered to be not effective than S ketamine because of the side effect profile however accumulating evidence from preclinical studies indicate that R ketamine has a greater potency and a longer lasting antidepressant effectiveness in animal studies R ketamine has a fewer side effects when compared to S ketamine but however abuse potential is high compared to S ketamine S ketamine has higher potency four time higher potency in blocking an MDA receptor my dear friends hence the S ketamine has been approved for intranasal administration for treatment resistant depression my dear friends so the verdict is not yet closed although R ketamine appears to be effective over S ketamine still a head to head comparison need to be done in a long term prospective study with double blind RCTs what about maintenance ketamine in treatment of depression my dear friend this is a question which need to be answered usually ketamine appears to be very effective in short term what about in the long term Smith and his colleagues published an important article titled as maintenance ketamine treatment for depression a systematic review of efficacy safety and tolerability was published in Lancet Psychiatry in 2022 this study tried to answer the long-term efficacy and safety and tolerability with regard to ketamine Smith and his colleagues did a thorough search of the articles and initially they found 5734 5, studies however after removing the duplicates and applying inclusion and exclusion criteria they found hardly 45 articles which were can which could be used for this analysis in this 45 articles three were rcts eight were open label trial and 30 case series my dear friends as you look here there are only three rcts the route of administration of the ketamine were various there were iv ketamine was 18 intranasal was three studies intranasal s ketamine was five studies oral ketamine was 11 studies intramuscular was three and subcutaneous was one study one only my dear friends if you this study divided the usage of ketamine into three important category if it is used less than for six months it was considered as initial treatment 
if it is used for 6 to 12 months, it was mid-term treatment and more than 12 months was considered as long-term treatment. Frequency of administration of ketamine was daily once to 3 months once was the administration frequency noted across the study. Sustained response rate has been divided into less than 6 months, 6 months to 1 year and more than 1 year. This is the response rate of ketamine. That ketamine which is given intravenous. Here, this table clearly depicts that there are no RCTs. Most of them are K-series or open label. The response rate with regard to ketamine less than 6 months fluctuated somewhere around 33% to 100% my dear friends. Similarly, 6 months to 1 year, the response rate fluctuated from 22% to 100%. For more than 1 year, the response rate from 0 to 100 persons was noted. But you need to keep this in mind. None of them were RCTs. Similarly, this table clearly indicates about the intranasal, oral and intramuscular administration of ketamine, my dear friends. And again, the results of these studies were divided into sustained response for more than 6 months, less than 6 months, 6 months to 1 year and more than 1 year. With regard to intranasal, my dear friends, less than 6 months, the response rate was somewhere around 69 to 100%. For 6 months to 1 year, 100% and more than 1 year, intranasal did not show any improvement. However, with regard to oral, my dear friends, 100% improvement and midterm was 92 to 100% and more than one year is 100%. That means oral appears to show more sustained improvement. With regard to intramuscular, my dear friends, the results are similar. This study concluded that despite the methodological limitations with regard to methodology, hardly three RCTs, and many case series, case reports, open label. The study concluded that from this clinical review, maintenance of ketamine treatment seems to be therapeutic potential is there. That means ketamine is not only effective in short term duration, but also in the long term also. Use of maintenance ketamine treatment can be considered similar to ECT, my dear friends. And undoubtedly, we need to exercise caution by giving ketamine as a maintenance dosage for longer duration. That means the available data is very minimal at this point of time. Now there is another important question. Whether ketamine is useful in various stages of treatment resistant depression? Whether a milder treatment resistant depression, ketamine is useful or else in moderate treatment resistance or in severe treatment resistance? There are various studies looked into this. One of the important study published by Leventa in 2022 in Journal of Affective Disorder, the study of the title was The Association Between Stage of Treatment Resistant Depression and Clinical Utility of Ketamine or Esketamine. A systematic review was done. This systematic review and meta-analysis was done to know the antidepressant effect of ketamine at various stages of treatment resistant among the population of treatment resistant depression, my dear friends. So, this study searched various articles and found 1,223 studies. After removing the records, which are duplicate, applying inclusion and exclusion criteria, finally, 18 studies were included in the review, my dear friends. The study results clearly indicated that ketamine is a rapid and efficacious treatment for depression that does not respond to conventional treatment. Further, ketamine appears to be efficacious even in samples who had failed to respond up to 5 to 7 antidepressants, my dear friends. Hence, the study results suggested that ketamine may be efficacious across the spectrum of treatment resistance, my dear friends, including highly treatment resistant cases also. That means if the patient does not improve even with 7 antidepressants, it is worth 
trying ketamine, my dear friends. What about ketamine and suicidality? A study published by Ziyang et al. in 2021 in Journal of Psychiatric Research. The title of the study was Acute Anti-Suicidal Effect of Single-Dose Intravenous Ketamine and Intranasal Ketamine in Individuals with Major Depression and Bipolar Disorder. A Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. Again, after applying the inclusion and exclusion criteria, the number of studies which were considered for the quantitative analysis were 9 and qualitative analysis were 14. So let's look into the results of the study. This meta-analysis pooled 9 RCTs which comprised of 341 participants, my dear friends. And the study results were stunning. Single dose IV ketamine and intranasal S ketamine is associated with a robust reduction in suicidal thoughts at 2 hour, 4 hour, and 24 hour post intervention. And it is also found to be effective even in the repeating the dosage of ketamine, my dear friends. That means ketamine is very effective in decreasing suicidal thoughts or suicidal attempts. Further, which it all published in 2022 in Australian and New Zealand Journal of Psychiatry. The title of the study was Ketamine for Suicidal Ideation in Adult with Psychiatric Disorder, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Treatment Trials. 24, 25 reports from independent trials with a total of 572 participants diagnosed predominantly with affective disorder were included in the meta-analysis. A single infusion of ketamine may have a short-term beneficial effect up to 7 days, my dear friends. Although this study showed 72 hours, but some of the studies have indicated up to 7 days the effectiveness may be there. Anti-suicidal action starts within hours of administration of ketamine. The reduction of suicidal ideation has been reported to endure up to 7 to 10 days, my dear friends. Repeated dosage of ketamine does not cause a stichophylaxis. And the effectiveness increases up to 6 weeks, my dear friends. This is an important study according to me. Ketamine rapidly reduces suicidal thoughts. And this effect is independent of the mood efficacy from the ketamine. Hence, my dear friends, ketamine is a robust molecule to prevent suicide in short term. Also, few data indicates long term up to 6 weeks. Ketamine can be used to address the public health menace of suicide or attempted suicide, my dear friends. Coming to an important another question. Whether ketamine assisted psychotherapy is it effective? A study published in Journal of Pain Research in 2022 with the title Ketamine Assisted Psychotherapy A Systematic Narrative Review of the Literature. And when this study did this, it looked into 17 articles and abstracts involving 603 participants, which had 7 articles were RCTs. 5 articles were case studies, 4 were open label and 1 was retrospective study, my dear friends. The administration of ketamine was seen as per this chart. Before and after psychotherapy, 5 studies ketamine was infused, concurrently was in 2 studies, concurrently with psychotherapy and after psychotherapy was 1, after psychotherapy were 2, before, concurrently and after were seven studies, my dear friends. This table clearly indicates the route of administration of ketamine and number of sessions. Here the route of administration ketamine was IV, intramuscular, sublingual, intranasal or intramuscular plus sublingual was considered. The number of sessions are clearly depicted here, my dear friends. The results of this study were stunning. The preliminary evidence of ketamine-assisted psychotherapy indicates that clinically significant reduction in pain, anxiety and depressive symptoms were noted 
in the clients. Ketamine encouraged rapport building and treatment engagement. Not only that, ketamine promoted absenteeism in patients addicted to various drugs, my dear friends. Despite the variations in the study, route of ketamine administration, dosage, frequency, psychotherapy modality, overall treatment length, these findings are preliminary in nature, gives an important indication that ketamine may augment the psychotherapy and ketamine provided before, after or during the psychotherapy may have some beneficial effect. However, there is a need for large scale prospective RCT my dear friends. To conclude, ketamine is a NMDA receptor antagonistic and rapidly acting antidepressant. It is found to be very effective in sub anesthetic dosage that is 0.5 mg per kg body weight. It is safe, well tolerated both in short term and long term. Main indication for ketamine is treatment resistant depression and, and an anti suicidal drug. Ketamine can be used in bipolar depression and switching to mania as not to be not to be seen at this point of time with available evidence. Repeated use of ketamine does not cause a stachyphalaxis. Ketamine can play an important role in controlling epidemic of suicide, my dear friends. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.